All right, nieces and nephews, welcome back to the channel. My wife is laughing behind the camera because we have done all this before, but your old uncle in his addled brain forgot to uh, press that record button. Anyway, we have a special treat today. Uh, the wife, after riding with me for a little over a year on her own Harley Davidson, has had the opportunity and pleasure of watching me ride with these most comfortable floorboards. So she has decided to what? Try them out. Mine? Not yours, okay. my own. Her own, all right. So you guys know she has a Dyna and typically, typically you're not gonna see floorboards on a Dyna. However, looking at all the switchbacks that I've seen over the last year, I said, you know what? If uh, floorboards mount a switchback, why not on her fat bob? So we're gonna try it out. We found some floorboards online. Uh, we're gonna trust her life in the hands of some Chinese craftsmanship. Did you get them off of like Shein or something? <laughs> yeah, I got them off. I saw the team move Super Bowl ad, right? So I'm like, this has got to be it, right? No, but seriously, I did find some on Amazon. I couldn't really find anything that that fit her bike anywhere else. Uh, there's nothing for Harley. You know, everybody, the Harley parts are saying, oh, it won't fit. But the qualifier was with stock exhaust. And she doesn't have stock exhaust. Uh, this is probably going to work. And I reached out to the company and they, yeah, she's, what? Probably. Yeah. I mean, we'll find out, right? But putting these uh, putting these floorboards on are going to are going to remedy two issues that we've had. One, she's going to be more comfortable, I think, on floorboards. I like them. It is going to change her foot position a little bit, which I really hope she adjusts to like immediately. And two, whoever had this before, uh, they clearly laid it down on the right side. The uh, right side control is bent upward a little bit. I can always tell when she's riding behind me, I look in the mirror, looks like she's trying to knee herself in the face. And you can see here on the uh, tank that it's been dropped. I'm surprised though, there's not a big old dent in the tank. So I'm not exactly sure what caused that. I mean, it could have been Bow Mama for all I know. It was so. not me. What? I did not do that. Are you sure? Positive. Okay. So uh, your old uncle could do this work, but uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not. So. We're gonna have her do it. She's gonna be wrenching on her own bike. We've decided, cause she we kind of toyed with the idea of maybe getting her a bigger motorcycle, uh, like a Road King or something, cause she loves looking at mine. I love looking at mine, so I get it. But instead, I think we're going to put some time and effort and money into this one and, uh, and kind of make it exactly the kind of bike that she um, can ride maybe long distance or long term or whatever. So without further ado, Let's get started. All right, first things first, we're gonna open our uh, love love package from uh, China. China. Well, that sounds like a advertisement for a blow up doll or something. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult, really. Shouldn't be a famous last word from your old uncle, but it should just be a floorboard, a couple of mounts for the floorboard, a mount over here, floorboard over here, and then your extended bars, trolls, whatever. They go back to the brake and the uh, and the shifter, respectively. There's all your mounts. So not exactly what I was imagining when I wanted to lay them all out, but it's close enough. I think um, I think we got it. All right. First things first, we got to get the little plugs. That's what this is. Yeah, I've already taken one out just to make sure. So on the on the like just below the exhaust in the middle of the frame, you've got what looks like mounts for controls, right? But there's plugs in there. So what you want to do is kind of gently work your way in there with a little bit of force, but not so much to where it pops out and you hit your exhaust. Kind of a pain in the dick, huh? There you go. Okay. All right. What I want to do before actually disconnecting the um, the brake rod from the brake pedal is I want to break those two torque spits. You know what torque spits are? No. It's the star pattern uh, bolts that are, okay. yep, yep. So we're going to get a T40. Now this T40, it's actually a little bit loose in there, which kind of bothers me. Take this. You'd think I'd have everything ready for you, right? I mean, you'd think. So what I'm concerned with on this damn thing, the T40 does have a little bit of wiggle, but there's not enough wiggle to justify a T45. A T45 would be way too big. We're gonna take this half inch breaker bar with a step down on that T40. All right. You're gonna, on this, because there's some wiggle, baby, you're gonna have to make sure you're perfectly at 90 degrees. You moving? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, I hear I was worried about it. it was gonna be like corroded shut or something. Break the other one loose before you take that one off anymore. I just wanna make sure it's, oh, okay, well. 
All right, now, before, now that you know those are moving, come over to the other side and do the same thing. The reason why we're doing this right now, babe, is that we don't want, like I don't want to start disconnecting gear shift levers and brake rod, brake control rods, until we know we can actually get these things off. Mm. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. And uh, if you guys didn't know by now that your old uncle is uh, a big dummy, well, I'm here to tell you. I'm not, but sometimes I don't make the best decisions. So here I was saying the T40 was too small, but there's no way that there was a T45. Guess what? It is a T45. Now I did have to kind of hammer that in there since we already rounded it out a little bit. Thankfully, AutoZone isn't far away and I took my little, uh, little electric motorcycle. You guys haven't been feeling that electric motorcycle content. The uh, views don't lie, but I, it's fun, man. It's a blast. I love this little thing. Anyway, back to the install as originally programmed. All right, uh, I said we we're getting back to the install, but I want you guys to know that three days ago, this little boy could not ride anything two wheels, bicycle or otherwise. Yeah, so we got him out there Wednesday, never been on a bicycle, no motorcycles, had a hard time, and within a day, he had this. Now he's already doing like fast U-turns, and Drift. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> so he's calling it drifting. <laughs> Basically, he's slamming on the brakes and skidding it around, but anyway, I'm proud of him. All right, back to Bo Mama. Now that I've got that on there. I don't think it's turning. Oh, barely. There you go. Okay, now, before we continue taking those bolts off, now we wanna disconnect the other components. What we wanna do then is we gotta disconnect these. So find your wrenches. This looks like it could be a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter. Okay, so the other one, there's like a little acorn nut here. So you're gonna use the, the open side to kind of hold that one. You see? There you go. And what I'd like to do, because these come with like generic rods, I kind of like to keep the ones you have on there if they fit, which they should. All right, now you can take the whole assembly off with the uh, big ratchet. Kind of like you, big ratchet. Thanks. Uh, be careful, you're right underneath the primary, so you're, yeah. I don't want you to scratch that anymore. Look at Bo Mama working on bikes. She's more successful than I am already. The only problem we run into is because of my lack of foresight. <laughs> she hasn't done anything wrong yet. Oh God, don't say that. You guys might've caught that, you might not have. My grandson wanted us to watch out, him coming in hot. <laughs> what are we gonna do? There you go. Keep them all at one spot. Now while you're over here, you might as well dig out those plugs on this side. Something else that we did, we recently ordered, like this week, new um, levers. I mean, these are okay, but this one's broken on the right side. We talked about, look, it looks like the bike had been dropped over there. So I got her black ones. I'm gonna order these mirror mounts because these are all rusted. And I got her a new, uh, if you look at this derby cover, it's all scratched up. Anyway, the guy had a theme. He had this like slasher theme, you know, the wheels are like that the derby covers like that even the the sprocket back there for, for the pulley for the belts like that but i ordered her just a plain black wrinkle black derby cover so we can start getting this thing um i don't know looking a little bit better all right after uh, studying the lack of instructions for a while so what we're going to do this is uh these torx bits i kind of would rather use those but uh, we don't we don't have enough this is 730 seconds. This is not how we're gonna final mount. We're gonna get this on with this terrible tool. And then I'm gonna go get a 730 seconds and actually torque these things before we take any real rides on it. So for now, use this. And we're gonna put this on. It's gonna go like this because it's gonna hold the rear. Down here? Yep, it's gonna hold the, the rear support of your... Also, this thing didn't come with washers and the instructions or the diagrams don't show washers. Um, so we don't have enough. I would need eight of those washers and I don't have them. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this old screw to see if I can make sure the threads are gonna be good. It feels like once you get past this point, it's gonna be fine, it's just... Maybe nothing's ever been in here. And even though the plugs were there, just years of, yeah, this is fine. It'll go in. What I will do is um, I'll get these started for you. Uh, any job that your old uncle starts on, never I, I never can just come out and do it. It's like there's always multiple trips to 
something. Lowe's, Home Depot. Lowe's, AutoZone, Home Depot. God, Home Depot is like 15 miles from here too. All right, honestly, I don't wanna have to remember later to go get an actual hex bit that I can torque with. So we're gonna take another trip over to AutoZone. We've already taken one today. All right, scratch that. Thanks to Bo Mama's infinite wisdom, she said, I said, I'm pretty sure I had a 730 seconds two years ago and I built my torque kit or my tool kit. She said, you wanna check first? I'm like, yeah, I'll check. Sure shit, it's in there. So I just had to look a little more, <laughs> something she's not really surprised at. No. So yeah, I wanna break out the torque wrench now, have her, uh, have her do a little torquing, I think, for the first time. You ever use a torque wrench? Okay, well, she's gonna use one now, so let's get to it. The torque range on these are 25 to 35 foot-pounds. It's a very wide range, so we're gonna set it on 30. What you're doing is you're lining up this zero with the corresponding number, right? So if we wanna get on 30, you gotta wind this up until the zero is on the 30. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's 25. Like that? Let me check it. Yep, that's 30. Then tie it down your set screw. So then what happens is, if you need an extension, let me know. Try to get that in there. You need that all the way out. So you're gonna tighten it. There you go. I'm afraid I don't want you to I feel round like it. I'm goofy with it. I don't want you to round it off. Give me an extension. It's gonna be about three inches long. You should know what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, so, there we go. So the way this works, baby, is you'll tighten it, on, on a torque wrench, you have to hold it 90 degrees down here and you can't pull from here because it relies on um, the leverage. Basically you made this shorter to know when to pop. So that's 30 foot pounds. I'd like to uh, thank the People's Republic of China for this uh, fine piece of craftsmanship. Yeah, earlier when it wasn't in there, right? I think you rounded it out. These bolts are aluminum. All right, once again, these instructions show zero washers, which um, has me kind of worried a little bit, but you know what? If the good folks at the People's Republic of China don't think we need them, then we're probably good. Here, you can do that, huh? I'll torque them if you want. Now we'll torque it. You wanna try torquing again? No. Okay. I wanna fuck it up. It's all right. The trick with these is you gotta keep them like perfectly 90 degrees. You can't, I don't even get it all right all the time. 30 or 30 foot pounds. There we go. 30 foot pounds. Hell yeah, boys. All right, let's get this uh, floorboard on. You wanna line these up and uh, stick them through there? Here, I'll get this side working together. Floorboards actually look really good on this thing. Look at Bo Mama. No, it's awkward. Here, let me hold the floorboard up. That way you can concentrate. Well, I guess you're just... I was holding it with my thumb. So we're gonna tighten that down until you can't anymore. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna kind of pinch. If you wanted to alternate. Not on, not on something like that, because each one's independent. So in a general rule, when you're tightening things, you can get down to your last bit. You don't want to tighten the bolt or screw. You want to tighten the nut. Notice we are working in the shade here. We are shade tree mechanics. I'm just surprised there's not like, uh, they don't put like rubber bushings or something in between these. Cause this is kind of like wide open, you know? So even though this uh, floorboard kit came from China, they're following the rules that Harley follows where sure, you know, you got 730 seconds type shit everywhere, but why not throw in a, there we go. Why not throw in a 10 millimeter? Cause Harley. So now, this guy is gonna go through here, and that's where it's gonna tie into there, right? It's just this piece back on there. Now you can do that or use their own. It depends on how you wanna do it. And then we're, then we'll take your, now this is replacing this. So it's really up to you if you wanna put your old shifter back on with the Willy G thing on, or if you wanna go all brand new and go black on black with your new. Oh, yeah, let's do that. The new ones? Okay. So what we wanna do is we wanna get this piece on first, because this is gonna tie in. This is this, this length is already set. So is it this thing? So we're gonna use the old ones. There you go, which is fine. Maybe you can use the new acorn nut. Now, if you're on a wrench, if you're getting that close to like your engine, turn it around the other way. See what I mean? Yeah. So it'll flare away from it. There you go. Now see, it's still loose. You can pull this in and out. So what keeps this straight, you know, we're gonna put this on. And the thing about this is you, you may not like the position that it's in, but because it's on splines, we can always adjust it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. 
All right. Then we'll put this back in, crank her down. Again, if you don't like where this is, like if you want to lower it or raise it or something, we could do that. I should be letting you do this, huh? I'm, I just, I know I just kind of take over and I don't, I don't mean to. Here, I'll hold it still. Push the button on the back of the, on those. Snap-ons have that, yeah. Perfect, perfect, keep cranking. One more, I can feel it. I do feel like maybe, so you guys look, this has, it shows a, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It shows a, a washer going in between this piece and here, but it doesn't show a washer going in between here and there, but I feel like it should. Also, it's got this A, B, C, D part. Look, there's no A, B, C, D. So, uh, you know, it also shows a bolt here and uh, there's definitely no bolt. Where, where are you gonna put a bolt here, really? All right, boys, look at that. Look at that. I mean, we're only halfway through and uh, we fumbled quite a bit here, uh, mostly because I'm dumb, but also because the instructions are not clear and things are mismarked and I don't know. So we still gotta do this side. She said on, on it already to look and uh, what do you think so far? I think it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be great too. All right, now we're ready to do the right side. Now the left side's on. So this side's gonna be very similar. Now all of our parts, since uh, your old uncle dumped out all the pieces and parts over here on this side, we can either pick them up, carry them all over there, or drag that towel around, whatever you feel like is most convenient. <laughs> if I drag it around, I'm sure I'll cause some kind of- Oh, not sure, I know. Popping and losing parts, so we can probably just pick them up. This side theoretically should be easier since we kind of got an idea uh, on the other side of what we're doing. The only thing I don't know is, is if we're gonna use the existing little bar, I don't know, push, rock, whatever it's called, that runs from the pedal back to the master cylinder. Because this side is bent upward from whatever happened to it, that might have caused that bar to bend. I, it did come with another one. The advantage to using the existing one is that the distance is already set, so I don't really have to mess with it. The advantage to using the new one is that it's not bent. So, you know, we'll see what happens here. So let's get to it. Okay, so what we wanna do, that little piece, all right, take that, that ring off. It's like a little key ring. And the new parts, the set of parts comes with a new one. That's a cotter pin. I do like that one better, so we're probably gonna reuse that. And then there's a washer behind there. And you, you pop that out. You can tap it with a wrench or, here, tap it with this. Move the breaker in a little bit. Oh, the pedal here. Well, when they bent this thing, they bent it good. Oh, so maybe that whole bar is bent too. Right, which is why we're probably gonna use yeah. our new one. Give me an actual hammer out of the out of the toolbox, please. It could be that this thing is also corroded in here. Yeah, kind of looks like it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna take those old bolts here in a minute, and I'm gonna run them in to this to make sure everything's good to go there. Hand me the new bar. I want to see how that goes. Yep. Go find me a half inch out of that bag, please. And don't sit down yet, because it might even be a 9 16 But I don't want to bring more wrenches over here than I have well, to. Well, why? You're right. <laughs> Should've just brought the whole tool bag right here. You're a tool bag. So do you know how, if, by looking at this, do you know how this whole operation works? Like what this is for and all that? No. So what happens is you're gonna screw this in, and once, like you're gonna bring it all the way back here. Screw it in, and once you get this perfectly lined up with your brake pedal, then you, then you run this nut down as a oh. lock nut to tighten it. Gotcha. So, all I want to do here is just make sure I can run these in. That's where I messed up earlier. No, I said it's pretty messed up now. Yeah, well, that's where I was looking at earlier. It's scraped here and it's scraped here, so they definitely laid it down. I mean, I think well, we, we knew that. Anyway. that the, I mean, the brake lever is yeah broken too. Okay, so that piece there. That, this? Yep, it's gonna be your rear mount. Well, I'm glad I remember to do that now. It's cause of how these go. Should've done the right side first cause the, the exhaust side's gonna be the problem child anyway. Okay, so the, uh, the troubles that we've run into so far have been from uh, unclear instructions and uh, me not maybe having the right tools for the job and kind of figuring it out. We've run into our first actual snag. So these um, these big radius pipes look cool and they sound cool, but they, they extend down like way past the, uh, the cam cover and you cannot get that floorboard bracket on there. And I thought maybe if I took the heat shield off and could mount the rear 
floorboard mount back there, then I could just notch the, the uh, heat shield. But even with the heat shield off, there's just not enough room. I need, I need a good half inch. So the two options are put the forward control pegs back on, send these back, fuck it, right? That feels like a defeat. It does, I'm not gonna lie. Or um, buy our new exhaust. Don't really wanna spend that money necessarily right now. I, I need to do some research to see what I can even put on there. Uh, that is another option, is she can have her floorboards. You have to buy a whole new exhaust to get floorboards on it. So that could be it. That could be what we're gonna end up doing. So we're gonna think on that for a little while. I'm gonna leave things like they are for the moment. And then, uh, yeah, gosh, always something. It wouldn't be an Uncle Bo Gator video without uh, something catastrophic like this, or not catastrophic necessarily, but complete course altering problems. So we'll call it that. We'll catch back up with it when you figure it out. All right, y'all, welcome back. It has been uh, four days since we uh, ran into our little snag with the exhaust. And thanks to a good friend of mine, Phil Zilla, if you guys aren't following him, uh, go check him out. Does a lot of great slow speed stuff. A good dude in general. Um, we were able to acquire some uh, Vance and Hines short shots. I know a lot of you got Dyna Bros out there are gonna be like, oh, those exhaust are blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. It's what she likes, not what you like. Not even what I like necessarily, but um, because that's gonna follow the line of the timing cover we think that's gonna be the exactly the room we need to get that rear mount on for that floorboard. So what are we gonna do tonight? Any idea, baby? Fantastic. So we did pick up a couple other parts. Uh, I had a gift card uh, for Harley, so we got some levers, because hers are broken. She broke them. I did not. No, she didn't. And uh, we got a new derby cover, because I think I showed you guys, whoever had this bike before was definitely going for a theme. And while I can appreciate everybody's vision to a degree, not necessarily the route I would go. They have the you know, slash rotors and the slash wheels, uh, the slash rear sprocket, and uh, even this little slash derby cover. And I, I don't like that at all. So we just got our wrinkle black derby cover and we did have it in the shop over at Burt's when I worked over there and got some warranty work done on the uh, clutch plates and the compensator. And I know that when he put that all back together, he put Sin 3 in the primary. I'm not personally a big fan of Sin 3 in the primary. So since we're gonna change the derby cover anyway, it's not gonna take no time at all to drain out that primary and put in some Amsoil in there. So without further ado, let's get Bull Mama's hands dirty. What do you say? Yay. All right, first things first, we're gonna drain the primary. I haven't told her where the um, drain plug is yet, but it's basically right underneath the primary there. It's See gonna it. be a five eight, five eight little bolt. You have the correct oh, thing. Right yep. Make sure it's going the right way. Let me see which one you're, you're on there. That's it. Oh, look at, look at Bo Mama's hands, it's nasty. Now these guys are real sensitive. Uh, make sure that's going the right way first. This particular derby cover that the person chose to put on here has the old flat flat gasket style that um, used to come standard on like uh, some of these and then the Evos. That's interesting. What is? Well, there's like two washers on one screw, one uh, two wash or one washer with no screws. Uh, yeah, we'll take that off. I mean, one screw with no washer. All right, that's a gasket right there. You can just pull off. We're not going to use it again. This. Yep. The whole thing is just a flat, like a piece of paper almost. How the fuck you get that out? It creates like a little suction. Yep. All right, how's that drain looking? And then look on the tip. Well, you've already cleaned the tip. I'm sorry, I should have told you earlier because those are magnetic. They'll pull that little scratch. Make sure you get that off. Because it's uh, inside of there, you've got a um, big old fat chain that turns your um, compensator, your clutch plates, well, your flywheel or whatever that is in there. All right, the good thing about um, putting the oil in these pans like this is it's a lot of, you can just dump it down the kitchen sink. It's a lot easier that way. You guys know I'm joking, right? Last time I said some shit like that, I had so many comments. All right, now Harley Davidson being the masters of selling you a solution to the problem they create, hard to get oil in there. So they made a special little funnel. It goes, slips right down on the inside of that lip. Yep. And then we're gonna put this entire quart of Amsoil in there. Pour it right in there? Yep. Pour the whole thing? Yep. 
For your bike, it's a quart. For my bike, it's 38 ounces, so I have to use a quart and six ounces. So the way that the other one was on there with that flat gasket material is the old way. About this era is when they went with the new way. Pull that orange gasket out of there, and you're gonna put it in that hole. It's not gonna be super tight. And now you can start with the top one again. It don't matter if it's still leaking out. No, that's what that gasket's there for. Yeah, I like that look a lot better. Yeah. Do you like that better? And then I kind of like the contrast look with the screw still being chrome. What do you guys think? Way better look or not? So the idea that we're doing here, we're not doing a build. We don't have that kind of money or resources, but we're definitely gonna try to square away some things that either design choices from the previous owner that we didn't care for, or some cosmetic upgrades. I have reached out to some uh, companies out there to see if they wanted to go into partnerships uh, to do some of these things, but I'm not expecting it. If they do it, great. If not, that's also great. It's just gonna take longer. So that was one of them, you know, fixing that, uh, you know, putting the right derby cover on. Floorboards on another thing that we're doing. You know, some of these things like, you guys see uh, like the rust on the uh, that ball stem. I've got those on order. I mean, little things like that. Now, the exhaust is gonna be different, not necessarily by choice, but because we had to. Um, I did price out a package today on uh, DNA Specialties for all new wheels, rotors, and white wall tires for about $1,800. I don't have that right now to spend on, on this, but you know, it's a goal that we can save towards. Um, levers, you know, they're broken, they're kind of crusty. So just making it a better looking bike. Looks like we're taking a dirt bike break. I mean, this is after work for both of us on a random ass Thursday. We got a little bit of daylight left, so we're just trying to knock out some little things that we wanted to do anyway. I don't know if we're gonna get both these levers on tonight or if I'm gonna have to dedicate more time to uh, my grandson's dirt bike riding time. That's also a priority. But I figured while we had this stuff out and available, why not take care of it? So let's see when we start getting these, uh, these levers on. Yeah, here's our dirt bike break. Now, normally in the evenings, I have been riding my uh, little electric scooter with him when we go around the neighborhood, but because we're working on the bike tonight. Speaking of, next up, levers. We're gonna do the clutch side first, um, because if we don't get both levers on, I don't really wanna be messing with uh, throttle cables tonight. It's not that it's hard, I just, at some point I wanna go in and feed my fat belly and sit down, so. You ready for levers? Yeah. Okay, first thing you're gonna do, uh, grab my tool kit there, and you're gonna find two wrenches. Basically, we're gonna loosen up the clutch cable. So we're gonna run this in um, to make it loose. And then we have to tight, after your bars were done, we haven't readjusted the clutch anyway. Inside of the primary is fine, should be. So this will give us the opportunity to make sure we adjust the clutch anyway. All right, so we'll make this loose. And what that'll do is you'll see now your, your clutch cable starts getting super loose. See how loose that is now? Yeah. That's tightening. Oh. And it is? Yep. You're upside down, so you have to look at it the other way. Yep, there you go. Okay. This pin, look underneath there. You've got a retaining ring on it. Do you see it? Yeah. You gotta get that off with a pair of snap ring pliers. So you gotta put these two little nipples inside the retaining ring. Don't stretch it too far. But you gotta apply upward pressure to make sure they stay, squeeze it to open it, and then pull it out. You know what I'm talking about? Guess we'll figure it out. <laughs> yes, we will. This thing right here? So there's a ring on it, yep. Do you see the ring? Oh. Yeah, and it's got, right, it looks like a C. Like, it's not hard, Why it's they just. Why them like this? It's so dumb. So that way it's just a pen instead of a screw, because this thing needs to be able to rotate freely. Ooh, you're so close. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, so then we work this out. There's your pin. Now Put this, this one back on or is it a new one? I don't have a new one. Okay. Why well, is it stretched out too far? Clutch side. And then this little pin comes out. Boom. Right? There's one lever. Here, we're putting this pin down in here. To hold the clutch cable. Come on, bitch. And then this pin, let me get over there and look at it. I know you're supposed to be doing it, but yeah. Come on, get in there. Get in there. There it goes. There's a little, not a spring like you're thinking of, but like one piece of metal that keeps this thing from bouncing up and down. All right, you wanna put your retaining ring back in? Yeah, so let me, guys, let me show you guys um, the other handle, right? 
This one isn't as bad. It's grooved. A lot of this aluminum stuff and, and chrome that's on here, um, you know, this is a Pinellas County, Florida bike. It's a coastal bike. And clearly this person lived somewhere with a carport or, you know, a trailer or something because there's a lot of pitting. So we went ahead and got, you know, these guys here. I think they look good. All right. Here she goes with the retaining ring. Oh, oh yeah. Look at you. You're doing it. No problem. I just start squeezing it. Yep. <clears throat> you got it. Not your fault. Everybody does it. There's a tendency to spread these open too far. We take them off. Real easy because they're super thin, right? Here, let me try it. Oh, there it goes. It. Yep, it's on. All right, so that's on. Maybe I'll still get new ones just for fail safe, but it's on there. All right, so now we get to adjust the clutch. So you're gonna back that long tubular piece on the bottom back down. And I, technically you're supposed to measure it, the pull from here, but we're gonna play it by ish. So unscrew that, we're gonna make that long again. So see, that's too tight. Yeah. See, see how this doesn't move at all? Yeah. Okay, so bring it back up some. All right, stop. Now what, how you measure it, come up here, I'll show you. I don't have the right tool for it, so it's kind of, when you pull on that, so we, we can tighten it back up, that's too much. So so unscrew it just to like another turn, right there. See, and you got a little bit of play. That's about right. All right, now just lock nut only down to stop it. Now you're gonna take your half inch and your 7 16 all right, now being careful not to allow the bottom part to turn at all, tighten that up. And you're gonna tighten that down this way. Yeah. A little bit harder, a little bit more. There you go. All right, now we can put your uh, mirror and your light back on. Okay, so in order to do that, you need your, uh, your mirror. We'll worry about the fine tuning of the mirrors and the lights after everything is done. Grab your uh, ratchet. So there's a way, oh, this is it. Okay, and we'll leave that, we'll leave that alone. So there we go, we got a lever. Man, that's what different feeling. Mom, I can't it. Well, it shouldn't be that different. I mean, I'm just saying like the squeeze. The too tight? I don't know. I mean, I'll have to ride it. I mean, the, your tightness of your actual clutch has nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. That's your clutch springs and everything in there. All right, we're gonna start on the, uh, the brake side. Uh, this will be my first time I've never changed levers before. So I do know that on the brake side, it's a little more involved. You've got to disassemble the switch housing. Um, I hope I don't have to take the grip off because I really don't want to mess the throttle cables. But on the brake side, you've got, where's it at? This little, there it is. That's going to lock into the housing, uh, which is why you got to at least take the upper half off or something. Um, so we're going to mess with it and we're going to get it there. And then uh, at least the levers and the derby cover will be done. I'm not gonna record all the minor, the, the minutia of it. If some, if we come into something that um, is off, then I'll record that so you guys can make fun of us. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's gonna be very similar to the left side. It's just that this side, you're gonna have to switch housing. We'll see in a bit. All right, somehow we were uh, blessed by the gods of everything. And uh, this actually went in tons easier. We didn't have to take apart the housing or anything. We figured out a way to kind of shimmy that in there without the, the brake light switch works fine i was kind of worried about that i already tested the brake lights they work good uh, so we'll we'll wait till we're done with everything and then do the the fine tuning of uh the turn signals and mirrors and all that stuff so, so we're going to assume that when these new exhaust comes in it's actually going to work out fine um, and then get that other floorboard on. Actually, while I'm out here and thinking about it, since we already have a half inch hooked up, I'm gonna see if these exhaust nuts are seized up. Let's see. Golly. Okay, I didn't film it just in case it was a catastrophe and I didn't wanna catch myself uh, screaming and cursing. Uh, the exhaust nuts were actually a little bit too loose, so uh, it's fortunate in this scenario, but definitely gonna have to make sure to go around and tighten those after we get this whole scenario figured out. You better be careful. But I think that's gonna wrap up this video right here. We started off with the sole intent of just getting these floorboards on. It turned out to be a, a bigger project. So hopefully on the next video, um, we'll we'll wrap up these floorboards, take everything out for a little test spin, make sure everything is good to go. And then, uh, yeah, thanks for coming along for this video and all videos. Till next time. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. And do the point thing. We'll see you later. Do at the same time. We'll see you later. Perfect. I'll kiss it. No. No? All right. See you later. <laughs>